Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to try to keep a short video out there. I wasn't going to do it this morning, but I've got some things that I had to go take care of. But and I just got kind of got up a little late, but I wanted to get it out. I was wake. I woke up early this morning. I'm waking up between two and five, but this time it was around one, one thirty maybe. And I woke up, but yet I wasn't awake. I was still dreaming and still, you know, I, I was in that, in, that, in that place, you know, I'm sure. And uh, so I was still dreaming as I was waking up, kind of. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, be of good courage. Again, and I've got this message two or three times now in the past, over the past year. Yeah, I put one out a couple days ago out of Deuteronomy 31 6 there's many other ones that he's always with us and then he spoke to me and he said go to Isaiah 19 1 through 6 and then corresponding is Psalms 19 1 through 6 so I did they're really good guys um, but the the one in Isaiah is about Egypt, but it's also about, he knows, he sees everything that's hidden, guys. My friend put out a really good message today, David Jackron. Look on my posts on my Facebook or look them up. But it's about choice and it's about heaven and hell. It's really, really deep, guys. This, 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 this man is really, really, he's, he's a very smart, intelligent guy. And that's how he tackles the Bible in a lot of depth, way more than me. Maybe in different areas. You know, we all have our different mantles, but it's like, man. But he really tackled that issue. And one of the analogies, semi was natural, but not really, but... It was, if there was a hurricane and the, 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 you know, they warn you, they say, well, some people still make that choice to get out and some people even die because of that decision. Not everybody, some people weather through it, but we have a choice, a free will of a choice. And that's a lot of my messages too. So we have a choice. And I was fairly encouraged this morning. And I've been through it, it just just recently, and it, I'm still there's still a lot of devastation from this, but a lot of it's from my choices too, but because of pride that I didn't see in my life, that I didn't think was there. And I made some really, really brutal, devastating choices. Some I stayed in relationships too long, some circumstances. Some the enemy, but I still knew Jesus was king. But for a while there, I thought Stevie was the king. Kind of pride, and so storms are have passed, but the destruction and devastation is all around. And I'm kind of reeling from it. So I was pretty encouraged this morning, and then I heard that. And then I've been us so physically. It, it, one of the things that wiped me out physically, mentally and physically. And I was just exhausted. I mean, like, literally. Stay up for about two weeks straight, and then that's the exhaustion level I'm at. And so I just went and laid down. And I was only laid down for another hour, and I ended up being, you know, two. And so it's like, okay, well, that kind of put me behind the eight ball on the time of stuff I've got to get done today. And, but that's okay. So, but I had to make a choice. I have to make a choice of being encouraged or discouraged. And he's saying, be of good courage. The world's discouraging us, twisting it up everywhere you look. But the Lord is gracious and merciful. But we have to choose. He wants us to be encouraged. When you read when you read Psalms, it's really good, encouraging. So is Isaiah. Well, Isaiah's a little bit tougher to swallow because 
it's about the it's about you know we we are it's not it's not just America this whole world is like living in the land of Egypt right now guys pharaohs have taken over the world and our government mostly but our churches have been like that for years we just choose chose to ignore it I'm not saying you guys are, this message is not just for, you know, I'm not saying that everybody is. I'm saying that, that a lot of the, especially the larger ones, the hierarchy is just out, of, out, out there. Okay. Probably a lot because of pride. I can say that now, not with arrogance or pride myself. Because I kind of got pretty humbled over this, guys, and even humiliated, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, one day I'll steer the whole story. But, so I needed this message this morning to be encouraged in the Lord. Because yesterday, a few days ago, I was like, man, I'm do like David did at Ziklag. I'm going to gird myself up and I'm going to take back the land, the things that the enemy stole from me. And I let him because of pride. So I'm just as guilty as, as the people around me that really did some devastating things and some circumstances. You know that old saying, you say, you hear people say, okay, well, they're, they're crazy, they did this, they, you know, all this stuff all around them. And it's like, well, you're kind of at the center. Well, I'm at the center. I made the decisions and could have just, it wasn't, you know, I, the Lord dealt with me about some of it. And he said, did you really pray about it? And I was like, I had to humble myself and say, no, Lord, I didn't. I just went and did stuff. Following his, you know, his will, but not his way. Did it Stevie's way, and it became a shipwreck of sorts. Not totally, but enough that Man, Lord, okay, so, so I needed this message today, so, you know, be, be be encouraged, because all around us is, you know, death and destruction, pretty much, because the enemy want that's what he's trying to do, destroy God's people, so, so I was, you know, like I said, I was like, David, and Ziklag, I was going to take back the land, but I got to do it without pride and arrogance, and I just got to do it in his authority, but I also have to do it his way. Timing and his will. We all have those choices to make, you know, and that, that was my, my friend's message was really good. That was about the choice, but I've, I've got one too about choosing the stone that the builder rejected because if you read in Matthew, I think it's Matthew 24, I can look it up, but it said, that, you know, that if we fall upon the stone, We'll be saved, but if we if the stone falls upon us, it's going to grind us to powder. It's in the Bible, guys. It's in Matthew twenty-four. Look it up. So we've got to make that choice. So we're going to be choose to be encouraged today and have good courage. What the Lord's telling us to do. Or are we going to be fearful? People are so afraid of being enslaved instead of set free instead of saved they want to be enslaved you hear more about the price of gas and the economy and inflation and just create you know and all that's relevant but it's really not you do about jesus and the blood of the lamb and the holy ghost in his way all the stories, you know, we, you know, we run and shout and leap over the David stories, killing Goliath, over the Jesus when he fed the five thousand, over the, you know, parting the Red Sea. Those are all, you know, yay, Yahoo. But do we really live them, guys? Are we really connected? Do we really are we really encouraged by the Word of God, or are we discouraged by the Word of God because we got hidden sin in our hearts? Mine was pride and arrogance. 
makes you make some really bad decisions because you're skewed already. And I didn't know it, guys. I didn't realize it. I kind of did, you know, to an extent. But I'd been, been there so long that, uh, that it was just buried. That's what the enemy does with the hid sins. It's in the Bible. It was I forget which battle it was, but David went to battle, and the Lord told him not to take anything from the from the you know from the enemy. Leave everything, and some of the soldiers did, some of the people did, and they hid it under their tent. And David went into the camp, and the Lord was like, "There's sin in the camp." And they hid gold and silver under their tent, and when he found it, the guys that did it was sentenced to death, and so was his family. But now that's where the same thing where I'm going with, with my message from my friend, which I say, I say the same thing too, just maybe in a different way, but not really. Choose. They have a choice to make. Now we've got a real choice to make, and that's Jesus and the blood of the Lamb and the grace and God's salvation plan. Or we ignore it, and we may, may very well perish, and our whole family may perish with us. You know, I'll, I'll end with this, guys, because this is not to discourage you. This is to encourage you, because the blood of the Lamb is really what we need to choose. Everybody wants to hear that amazing grace, and the amazing grace is awesome. It really is amazing. You hear it at every funeral. What a great person that person was and stuff. But guys, what was their life like? Did they really know? Honestly. It's too late then. So today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be encouraged. I tell you this, some of this stuff, because I've you know, been praying about it, I want to be a little bit in the air of caution with what I say, because I don't want to discourage anybody. It's to encourage you. Man, you can make it. One day when I'll tell you, you know, the full brunt of this story, you know, I will. Right now, it's like, man, get up. All right. I don't think you can see it because the light's coming in from the window. But right above that, right above that light on the door and the window is a cross. And right in that chair right there, one day is where I was sitting two years ago, maybe three. Look it up, guys. It'll encourage you. It's a it's a dog's story precious come home about god's redeeming grace look it up please it's a it's not a dog story it's about god and his redeeming grace I've got a dog named precious that was lost for three days literally you just look at listen to the story guys because it's a great 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 breakdown and analogy of god's goodness and his grace and his mercy and his truth even when we sin and fall short so today be encouraged because he's with you he's with us but we have to make that choice to hearken unto the voice of the Lord diligently guys and so that's my piece of my message and I'm going to end with this I keep saying that sorry because it never ends. Um, pray. Because if you don't pray, you're not going to hear his direction and his voice and listen to what he's saying and hearken unto his voice. And, you know, the Holy Ghost is there to lead God and direct you, but not if you're not praying and you haven't, haven't changed your life and haven't given your life to Christ and haven't let him in or in. There's way more to it than that, too, the salvation plan. And I'm a very firm believer in baptism and the Holy Ghost. Being baptized in Jesus' name, being baptized in the water. It's not the water, it's not the symbol of the water. It's the, it's the obedience and the following through of God's plan for your life. One day I'll share my baptismal story in 1980. That's why I can't be shaken and moved. 
I will. I just it, you'll have to hear it, so I know it's true. But we've got to choose to be encouraged, because He's there to encourage us, lift us up, help us in our time of need or trouble or to just bless us as we are where we're at. You know, there's times, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty awesome, gracious God. But we've been choosing to live a life in sin and expect God to bless us. We're looking for a way out and he's looking for a way in. Love you guys. Um, be of good courage today. Whatever you're facing, or seemingly facing, you're not facing it alone. I think I told this in one of the other messages. Man, like I said, I've been through some stuff that it would have killed ten men. I'm not making that up. That's not a pride thing. It would have destroyed multitudes of people. Nothing to do with me. It just has to do with his unending love and grace and mercy. Even when I was created a mess that I didn't think I created because of pride. He still had grace. But I have a lot of hope and visions. And I can't change them, guys. I just, I've tried and I told God to quit. He wouldn't. Long story, but I never won any one of those arguments yet. So I was standing there and I was on like a little bit of a slopey hill. There was a big hole next to me. Not real big, but it was you know, a little bit bigger than a you know, manhole cover in a sewer. Probably was a sewer, honestly. But, and, and I noticed that I had a shovel. And in the shovel, I was standing there all the show. And I, I looked over and Jesus had a shovel. And he was standing there. And he wanted me to fill in this hole. Dig and fill in this hole. So I did. I was filling it in. And then he started digging and filling in the hole. And he went, wiped the sweat off of his brow and kept working and digging the hole and didn't say anything. But I knew. He was there to help me. I wanted to cover up my sin. I wanted to hide it. I wanted to bury it. And it was almost like it was into the sea of forget forgetfulness and forgiveness. Never to be seen again. But we both had to do it together. He had to help me. And I, and I had to do my part. But he was there. To start fresh, regroup, re be encouraged. So I'm telling you guys, just be encouraged. Whatever it is that's seemingly facing you today. Because through it all, I'll learn to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Love you guys. Um, be of good courage today. See you soon.